Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here, and welcome to the SparkFun Inventors Kit version 4.0 hookup guide bonus features. Now, at this point, you've gotten through all the experiments and projects in the SIK hookup guide, so you may be thinking to yourself, gee, Rob, what can I do next? Well, pretty much anything. I'm going to go through a couple of ideas, maybe get your creative juices flowing, and help you move on from here. The first thing we're going to look at is making a new creation using only the parts in the SparkFun Inventors Kit basically combining previous circuits to make something new. So I'll show you what I've made. I have come up with Valkensan's shooting gallery. Uh, Jacques Valkensan was an inventor and an artist in France in the 1700s. He created a life-sized automata duck that would eat pellets, then appear to digest them and poop them out. What can I say? Entertainment was hard to come by in the 1700s. But I've used his little duck here to create a shooting gallery. Let's take a look and see the components I used for this. For this project, as you can see from the front, I used our 16x2 LCD display. If you look inside, you can see that I've used two motors. I'm actually only powering one, but I have two of them in there. I'm also using the photoresistor and an LED. This is how we're going to keep score. If I turn around to the back, there is our red board. We've also got our potentiometer here because we always have our potentiometer. We've got our motor driver here. We've got a resistor here and all the wires and the battery pack. Let's take a look and see what it does. Now I will set the duck up. So as you can see, the motors are driving the duck belt around and around. Now let me slow it down here and show you what happens on this side. Over here, we've got the LED. I unplugged it so the LED is not on. But we've got the LED above the photoresistor. When the duck is up, nothing happens. But if the duck has been knocked down, his head will pass through the LED and the photoresistor. This will register a drop in the amount of illumination that's hitting the photoresistor. When it drops below a certain level, that will add one to the score. So let's take a look at the code and I'll give you a brief overview of what I've done here. So basically all I've done is combined a number of previous examples that we've used here in the SIK experiment guide. You can see I've set up the liquid crystal just like we did for our display circuit. I've added a photoresistor here and given it a value of zero. I've also added current light and last light. That's how we're going to keep score. Here you can see I've set up my motor driver. I've set up a yellow LED to pin 19, which is actually analog zero, if you're keeping score at home. We started our LCD, we've set our pin modes here in the setup, and then in our loop, it reads our photoresistor. As you can see, our photoresistor value is going to be analog read A0, and current light is going to equal photoresistor, the value it gets from analog read. Now, if the current is less than 125, I base that on the light coming down from the yellow LED, and the last light was greater than 150, so that way if it's already low, it's not going to keep adding up to the score, then it's going to add one to the score here. It'll enumerate score plus plus. We clear the LCD screen, we put what we want. I've got score here, I've got steady aim down here, and that's pretty much the entire loop. Down here we've got our motor driver loops. And that's really it. So it's just a combination of what we've already done. So think about it. Look back at the stuff you've done and figure out what you can combine to make a new circuit, something completely new, some completely your own. One thing we haven't talked about or utilized throughout the entirety of the SIK guide is our Quick Connector. A Quick is an ecosystem for rapid prototyping of I squared C components. It's a four-wire system, and in the old days, and by old days, I mean like three years ago, you'd have to solder pins to your board before you could do anything with it. We've given you a shortcut. The Quick system utilizes a polarized four-pin connector. You've got your four wires here, power, ground, data, and clock. Now, instead of having to solder, all you need to do is grab a Quick Connect cable and a Quick Connect board, plug this end into here, and this end into here. Upload some code and you're ready to go. Now the board I'm using here is an ambient light sensor. You'll recall we did some ambient light sensing with the photoresistor in our inventor's kit. Well, this uses a different chip. This uses the VEML6030 ambient light sensor. 
it's more sensitive, and it's going to do some really cool things for you. So like I said, plug in your wires, upload some code, and you're going to be able to see some feedback. Or you could build into a project just as quickly as you plugged it into this board. Let's see what I did. So as you can see here on the back, I've got my board, my red board with my quick connector. Hey, where'd that sensor go? Apparently, I still need this sensor. I'm gonna take my ambient light sensor and plug it in right here in the front. A simple battery pack and one servo. You remember servos from our robot experiment. And there we go. Now I've got the servo mapped to the ambient light. The brighter it is, the further down the clown will go. But when it gets dark out, the clown comes up. Let's see. If I hit this with some light, look at that. The clown disappears. But as I pull the light away, oh, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, that's terrifying. And just like that, you've got another project. For this third build, I'm going to harken back to our sound project. If you recall, we were able to create sound through a small buzzer. You can also do the same thing through a speaker. I'm going to do that with this quick board. This is the BME 280. It's a temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and atmospheric pressure sensor. I'm going to be using the pressure sensor part of it for this. Again, as it's intended, you simply plug it in, upload a little code, and you can start reading your data immediately or you can branch out and go a little further. I'm gonna take this, build it into a sound-based object. Now you may have seen this in one of my previous videos. This is the Sparksophone. Basically what it does, if you recall, on our sound section of the SIK guide, we were able to generate a tone and through a buzzer or a speaker, create music, such as it was. Well, I've done the same thing here, but instead of pre-programming the music, this is going to be reading the pressure that I blow into this toy saxophone. The harder I blow, the higher the pitch. And the code for this is really simple. Let's take a look at it. So it's a really short setup for this code. Basically, I include the BME 280 sensor, which is our quick board. I float a baseline here, and what this number is going to do, this is gonna be a variable, and it's going to read the pressure in the room. So when you start up, if the pressure in the room is different from when you've initially programmed it, it won't be an issue. This will take a baseline reading so it knows where to begin. Your setup, you've got serial begin here, and this is just, if you're looking at the computer screen, which of course, once you've built your own Sparksophone, you won't be, wire begin, and then if the sensor isn't doing anything, don't do anything, but once it becomes active, then we start, we go to our loop. And if the baseline is greater than one, if you recall, I set it to zero up here. If it's greater than one, that is if it gets its initial reading, it will set the base. And then our set baseline happens down here. Then all it does is it reads the pressure from my sensor and then it outputs it to a tone. It's that simple. Blow gently, low tone. Blow hard, high tone. Let's test this out. Now, when we did the sound experiment from the SIK, if you recall, we used the buzzer that's included in the SIK itself. But I also did it with a speaker to enhance the sound, make it a bit louder. And it's really quite simple. I've plugged my speaker here into pin nine and ground, basically just made a, a louder, bigger buzzer. Let's test it out. Thank you, Boulder. Good night. So there are just a few ways that you can move forward with your SparkFun Inventors kit once you've completed all the experiments. You can repurpose and combine all the components in the kit itself, or you can branch out with our Quick Connect system, which currently has over 75 boards and is always climbing. 
You can use them, for example, to do exactly what they're intended. Read the barometric pressure and the temperature and jot that down. Or you can go completely crazy and make it do something no one's ever thought of before. Let us know what you're doing. The important thing is just to start something. Happy hacking, friends.